Daryl Kraft is well known throughout this area, but did you know he is also an author, the author of The Journal of a Six-Time Stroke Survivor? And judging by the title here, that tells you he has been through a lot in just a few years. Daryl is with me today to tell the story, yes. six time strokes, six strokes yeah. in a short period of time. Let's yeah. talk about what you have gone through. It's, I think um, I had the first four strokes in probably like three months and then the total in 15 months. So, and four of them were major and one was moderate and one was very minor. Yeah, so 15 months. And uh, if you can, for the people at home who we always hear about stroke symptoms, how did you know you were having a stroke at the beginning? Well, the first one I really didn't. I knew I wasn't feeling good and I went to the hospital and they missed it somehow. I guess they didn't do all the tests they could have done. But the second one, I ha actually had the day after my birthday, I was at work and um, I noticed trying to write in my log, I could no longer write. So, mm. I so you knew something, something was not was right. Wrong. Yeah. 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 So did you go to the hospital then at that point yeah. too? Yeah. My super, well, when I went down to tell my supervisor, I was like bouncing from wall to wall uh -huh. trying to stay up. So he had someone drive my car home and told me to take a few days off and recommend that I go to the hospital again. And my, my wife was working, so my dad took me. Hmm. Wow, so that was stroke number two yeah. in just a short period of time. Yeah. And they sent me to Toledo after that one. All right, so let's talk about Toledo. In this book, The Journal of a Six-Time Stroke Survivor, Daryl goes through basically everything that happened from stroke one all the way to stroke six and all of the other things that took place. But Toledo was a place that you were sent basically as a rehab type thing, and you were there for quite a while, weren't you? Um, it was um, several several weeks. I don't remember what I put in the book, but um, that's um, Mercy Hospitals. That's where their Stroke Central used to be, I guess, the main doctors. Um, I guess they've really built, the, um, built up a little bit in Lima, but they sent me up there for a diagnosis and mm -hmm. figure out, um, figuring out all the things that we're going with it and all the little, all the little things I mm -hmm. need to start dealing with. So as, as I'm talking with you and people at home are watching, they might think, okay, he went through a few strokes, but he's looking pretty good now and he's doing well. But as I read this book, I realized there were some pretty dark moments. Yeah. Some really difficult moments, especially when you're up in Toledo. Yeah, I remember after stroke two, listening to some music on the TV, cause that's all, I, that is all I could do and I thought that was the best I was ever going to get. So it was a very long road back. Let's but, talk about your vision situation yeah. that you had when you were there, because you really had a lot of vision problems. Yeah, and I still do. Um, I have two separate cases of double vision and they can't make bifocals out of um, prism glasses. So they've, the VA has basically given me two pairs and this is the long distance one for driving and the shorter distance is anything under three feet. Hmm. And I volunteer a lot, so I inventory at the soup kitchen and I have to wear those. I just keep switching glasses as I need them. Wow, wow. Yeah. So as we're talking and you know, I, I feel like it's the Paul Harvey end of the story because we get to see that here you are. Yeah. But when you were up in Toledo and you couldn't see and you didn't know what was gonna happen, you didn't know if you're ever gonna come back. No, I didn't. <laughs> And there was, I think this, like the second week I was there, we had the real bad um, blizzard and uh, when temperatures dropped into the um, 50 below zero for the wind chills and no one could get up here. Mm -hmm. And that made it very difficult, so. So you were stuck there in a hospital room yeah. and not really knowing what the future held for you, yeah. but you have a faith in God. Yes. Uh -huh. How was that faith in God so important to get you through that difficult, dark time? That was, it was absolutely vital because I mean, God was the only one left th mm. there. So I, I be, think I, my faith really grew during that period, mm -hmm. yeah. And isn't that interesting how God allows us to go through such yeah. difficult times? Oh yeah. And through that, his, mm -hmm. you know, it can grow our faith so much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 
Yeah, so that was just the beginning though. You had more strokes that were gonna come as this 15 month time happened. So yes, uh -huh. you, you recover, you get back home, but then you had strokes, more strokes. Yeah, that, I had three and four a few weeks later. And then I think I went six or seven months before I had s stroke five and then probably another, another five or six months and mm. had stroke six, so. How did you even stay mentally positive? I mean, after the sixth stroke, you, you're, you've been through so much, you didn't even know if you're gonna stay alive. And here again, uh, sometimes people just wanna give up. They said, this is just not getting better. You didn't give up, but yet you continued to have all of these medical issues. I think just um, praying about it. I expected I would, I, I expected I was gonna die, but um, I just prayed about it and did a lot on my phone, read up, well, I couldn't read very well, but um, I learned, um, I use a Bible on audio now. Mm. So um, I think somewhere in there, I went for a f uh, few months not reading my Bible, but then um, I don't remember the, how I realized you, got to, you can get a Bible on yeah. audio, but I, I've been through that three or four, a few times since then. Yeah. Yeah, so there's no excuse for anyone yeah, to not be ingesting the Bible. Right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. That's right. So let's shift now and talk about the book. Okay. Um, it's called again, The Journal of a Six-Time Stroke Survivor for sale in 44 countries. Is that what you said, Daryl? Yes, 44 uh -huh. countries. And we also uh, can connect with you and how that you can get your own copy of this. What led you to uh, publish the book? Well, after about stroke four, um, they put me on disability and I found how much, I asked how much my wife would get if something happened to me. Mm -hmm. And they said the payments would stop and she would get the balance of what's ever in my public employee's retirement. Mm -hmm. So I was just praying fervently, how can I raise more money, mm -hmm. uh, another pension or whatever. And the answer was write a book. So I'm thinking, well, I, or saying, praying, um, I'm on my deathbed, how am I gonna do that? And it's write a book. You're not, she, it's not gonna make, you're not gonna be rich, but all the bills will be paid. So um, I said, okay, I'm gonna need lots of help. So there were, I didn't have many of the memories. I need nothing, no framework to tie any mm -hmm. memories to. Mm -hmm. So I ended up reviewing over a thousand pages of medical records. Wow. So, yeah build up a timeline and then kind of just tied what memories I had in there and got a lot of information out of the um, medical records to put in there also, so. Well, one of the things I really liked about this book is you, you did what you just mentioned. You got a lot of information from the medical records, so it's an opportunity to, to, to follow that medical journey. Yeah. But through it, you, you continually show how God was with you mm -hmm. in the high points and the low points, was there with your wife, was there yeah. with your family, was there with you in the hospital room, how God never left you throughout all of it. Yeah. 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 I think I remember once, right after I learned to walk again, I just felt like I, God was taking a walk with me. So it's like walking hand in hand with him for my, um, the miles I walked that day. And now you're walking a lot. Yeah. Tell I me about how things are now for you. I think in 2019 on Mother's Day actually, I walked a mile in my hallway using a cane. Um, quickly figured out that was going to get boring. My wife, didn't want me really walking on the road because I might get, it was a pretty busy road. Mm -hmm. Now our neighbors have, they have a very long lane. So made out concrete on their land, it's off the highway. So they let me walk on that. So I think I go eight, eight round trips per mile. So I just, I can, there's trees along the lane. It's nice and shady and it's off the highway so no one can bother mm. me so so for those of you at home who have suffered through a lot of medical conditions right now i want you to keep 
going. You're here for a reason. God still has you on this earth for a reason. Could have taken you out, could have, could have said, okay, your time on earth is done, but didn't. And I want you to look at Daryl and use him as an inspiration for you because you're now walking, you yeah. are volunteering, mm -hmm. you are riding your bike. Yes, You're doing uh, things again that you probably never thought you'd do again. Yeah, absolutely. I didn't even know I could like my bike. I did took it over to um, the one place we usually ride. I didn't even know if I was going to be able to balance it. So, but I, you'd be surprised how much you can do if you just keep going. Just don't give up. There we go. Keep going. Don't give up. And we're going to end yeah. it on that note. The information is on the screen for how you can purchase your own copy of this book. You can also call me here at the TV station. And I'll make sure I get you connected properly as well, how you can get your own book. Daryl, thank you so much for sharing okay, your testimony, you. for trusting in God through the difficult times. Yep. It's so great to see where you are now. Yes. All right. Thanks for being here. Okay. Thank you.